Our fourth and final speaker needs no introduction, Jared Roughhead. And continuing along the lines of what we've heard a bit about tonight in terms of resilience, Jared, Jared will share his story, both his personal story and professional story. It's been well documented and covered uh, in terms of Jared's uh, health, health concerns and issues that he uh, obviously battled in more recent time and bounced back from that, uh, from that health concern uh, with true success. So he's one of the AFL's cult heroes. Uh, he's carved a place among the competition's elite as an athletic forward blessed with excellent agility and strong hands. He's also a local, local member of the community in Hawthorne East. Jared's won four premierships. He's a Coleman medalist, two times All-Australian and Hawthorne captain since 2017. He missed the first half of 2016 with a posterior cruciate ligament injury to his knee. In May, uh, treatment, late in 2016, Ruff had received positive news and the all clear from doctors following months of uh, therapy and was looking to return to footy in early in 2017. He successfully did so. Jared played 22 games for the 2017 season, including his 250th game for the club. Jared will obviously now share his story in terms of that success, but also his battle with cancer. Thanks, Jared. Thanks, mate. Um, this is one of the first keynote speaks I've done, so I don't have a presentation like the three that did, so I'm sorry, it's just going to be me. Um, you don't have to. It's a good picture. <laughs> um, so thank you for coming and thank you for having me talk tonight. Um, as I said, it's something that, one, I'm not comfortable with. Um, I still get a little bit if you're talking in front of the boys on the weekend and um, it's not as easy as what you think being up in front of a lot of people but I'm going to talk just about, I'm not going to talk about footy, um, I'm going to talk about what I went through a couple of years ago. So I, I have three things that I've written down here, positivity, so that's gone out the window with what Chris said <laughs> and um, but 75% of us have used it so I reckon we're the real winners and Chris is in Adelaide now so we'll just say that our talk's right. Um, <laughs> B belief, competitive and um, perspective. So a little bit of background, 2015, at the end of 15, we had a, a good run. We won three in a row, which is pretty good. Um, and I, I was on top of the world going into the uh, start of 2016. I just got married in January. Um, so everything was pretty good. thought life was great. Um, as I said, you get married on top of the world. Uh, I was coming back from a knee injury and I thought, uh, we were going to be a chance to potentially win four in a row. I know that seems greedy, but um, I, th I did think we were a good chance. But May 16, uh, 2016, I went in. I had a, a spot on my lip in 2015 that um, normal uh, melanomas grow. If you've got one on your back or, or your leg, they spread across. Where the one on my lip grew like a carrot, so it grew down. So um, I only missed two weeks with my lip, but... Um, they cut a quarter of my bottom lip off, so in, I was, it was 12 centimetres long, now it's only nine. Um, I still have a bit, of, I can't, I dribble a bit and I don't have much feeling still in the lip, so the, the surgeon says now if you can get electric toothbrush and brush your lip or your chin, you might get some feeling back, but it's been two years and I still dribble, so electric toothbrush isn't working just yet. But... May 16, I go in, I was having every, a check-up every three months and you have a, uh, a PET scan, so for people who don't understand it, what you do is you go into, I went into Peter Mac, you have a, uh, a glucose put into your, your, your blood system and you have to rest for an hour and then what happens is the glucose attracts itself to any tumours if you have in your body. So I go in, I was having every, as I said, every three months, went in, um, Doctor said, how are you feeling? How's your knee? I said, yep, hopefully back in a couple of weeks. And he says, all right, we're in a bit of trouble. Initially, I thought that I've just got another spot on my body. I've got enough freckles. Looks like I've sneezed in Milo tin half the time. But um, <laughs> I was thinking I just had a spot that was spread across my back or something. So he pulls up a, an image of my body and there's three, uh, sorry, sorry, there's four green spots, two on each lung, um, which are the tumours. And they're about as big as... Uh, a thumbnail at the time, so they'd got them pretty quick um, and automatically uh, life's on hold because I don't know what to do really. Um, I don't ring Sarah, my wife, straight away because I couldn't tell her over the phone. I rang a teammate and um, tried to work out the best thing possible. Um, 
went home, told Sarah, and that was it was all good. We we dealt with it that night. We had a cry and whatnot. But the next day, I got home, and who who's who's had an injury or, or been on? And you think Google's the answer? <laughs> oh, this is the worst thing that Sarah could do. I got home the next day, and I, I reckon she thought I was already in the box. I was, she was crying. She was. She just goes, "You're not going to be here for much longer." And I was like, "Oh, well, thanks, but <laughs> I um." I understood that the next bit was going to be tough. So I'd, I'd been given the chance to go on a clinical trial. Um, the first uh, initial bit was I had to get a biopsy. So they went in um, and, and took one of the tumours out, which was pretty lucky that it was only um, a little bit of my lung. Initially, I thought, well, why don't they just cut them all out? And then the doc said, well, if they keep coming back, you're not going to have much of your lungs left to cut. So I was like, yeah, fair point. Um, <laughs> but the, that, that initial first bit is the, the, the daunting bit because, as I said, you're married, all of a sudden um, you've been told that you have cancer and, and that word just scares the absolute crap out of you. So I, got, I went on a treatment that um, had only been around for two years at the time or three years, understanding there was going to be side effects and whatnot. Um, I, I had to deal with four different side effects, uh, the worst being that the nerves in my feet were starting to get eaten away. So um, with my job, I need my feet. Um, so... I kind of said, I'm in a bit of trouble here, I can't feel my feet. And it was on the eve of one of um, Sam Mitchell's 300th game that I walked in and I, I had to stand in the ice bath and try and get feeling back in my feet. It was like I had frostbite or um, bad pins and needles in my feet. So I, I knew, one, that the drug was working because it was kind of turning on me in a different way. Um, the competitive side of things with where I was going was that I treated it like a footy injury or like a, uh, a footy game, I guess. I, I, I still tried to do things uh, normally. I got the opportunity to go overseas um, and go to the NBA finals, and I took my little brother. Um, who's been to San Fran? Raise your hands. So Golden Gate Bridge, thinking, yep, travel with Cam. I'm in between treat my first and second treatment, so my little brother, you're always competitive. Come on, let's go for a ride over the Golden Gate Bridge. No worries. He's beating me. Now, I'm, that's never happened. So one, I'm thinking there's something going on here. And that night... I'm a bit tight in the chest, you know, so I'm breathing. He's like, you're right? Yeah, yeah, I'm all right. Get back to Melbourne, have a, pe have a CT scan. And they, they came running in and said, are you, are you all right? I said, yeah, I feel fine. They're like, oh, you've popped your lung. So obviously this, this is, so Cam didn't beat me. So <laughs> I, <laughs> I was running on only two cylinders compared to his four. So, but it was, it still made, it, it's a weird thing, but it makes you, it made me feel Alive, and that's not something that you know you think that you should be thinking. But going over, away with my little brother, riding across the Golden Gate Bridge, wind in your face, some rain—it's something that we, I think, we take for granted. Um, but at the same time, you know, it got me away from the Melbourne bubble. Um, one being because of footy, but two, um, I guess, walking the streets around here, you were kind of seen as that that cancer victim in a sense. So you could have—you always had the eyes prying on you and whatnot, and um, it was it was understandable. I guess I'm a little bit used to it with the footy, but when you've got people at uh, you know the, the hospital walking up and giving you a hug and stuff like this, saying thank you, you're giving us hope. It was like you're the poster boy for something that you'd never ever want to be the poster boy for. So I guess in that perspective, it, it put life thing, life in perspective. So and that was the, the final thing for me is that I I was one. I'm a country boy, so. You guys in your Xavier jackets, I got to wear casual for you 11 and 12, so that was, you know, I know you have to wear the blazers everywhere on the trams and whatnot and don't lose them, but I, I wore slippers for one class in year 12, so, um, and I was so, I'm so, I'm a bit, um, I suppose, anal with my preparation and whatnot, I used to walk um, Safeway the same way before each game and I'd get 14 mushrooms, exactly the same, so I was a little bit... Um, not as bad as Josh Gibson, who used to drink 16 Powerades, but I have um, little things that are probably not right. Um, whereas now, I, like now being um, cancer-free for two years, but also um, I have a little girl at home now who's six months old, so Pippa, um, and she's everything um, to me now. It, I couldn't give a... I, like, I care about footy, don't get me wrong, but now if I've had a bad day or... Um, I've had a good day. She doesn't care. 
I'll come home and I came home today and Sarah pretty much just threw at me because she'd had a shocker. But then it's all, of a, all of a sudden when I walk in, there's smiles. She's got two bottom teeth now. Um, I'll go home and have to do the dream feed tonight. She'll probably be up at four. So um, in terms of routine for footy now, that just gets thrown out the window. She actually doesn't care. Um, she's been to a couple of games and, and stuff like that. But now knowing that footy's only going to be well, 10% of your life, really, for me. It's going to be hopefully you know, only 10% of, of what I've done. Um, so now having a little daughter who means the world to me, also I, I do care about my wife a lot, but <laughs> I've, got, <laughs> I've got this little six-month-old who's um, my everything at the moment. So understanding now that I've been a part of the AFL life for 14 years, but in six months I've learnt a lot more by having a daughter than what I did than what I have in 14 years of, of footy life. So um, I guess for me, that, that last message is don't just worry about the one thing that you care so much about. As everyone said tonight, have an open mind because when you get thrown a little, little girl, um, I'm in a bit of trouble in a few years' time, I dare we'll probably. So if any, oh, well, you, if any of you got little brothers, don't come near me, all right? <laughs> um, <laughs> So I'm rambling on enough, so thank you very much. Um, and I dare say we'll have a few questions later, but thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jared. Uh, fantastic talk and obviously very raw and from the heart, no slides, uh, which, was, uh, which was great. And uh, you know, one of the first times you've shared your story. So thanks so much for sharing it with us and the community at Game Changers. We really appreciate that.